Hello again, everybody. Joe Fiducia back with a very important topic in Office 2010, and that is called Compatibility Mode. Now, if you look up there at the top of my file, you'll see right next to the file name the words Compatibility Mode in square brackets. What does that mean? This simply means that the document I'm working in is remaining compatible with older versions of Office. Today, we're using Office 2010, but what happens if I email this file to somebody using Office 2003? an older version of the software. Well, the way this file is set right now, it is remaining compatible, meaning folks in 2003 should be able to open it and see it. What that means for us is certain tools will not be available. See, when we start working in compatibility mode, there'll be certain features of an application that will not be an option. They'll be grayed out, and we won't be able to select them. And it doesn't matter which application we're in. We could be seeing this in Word. We could be seeing this in Excel or PowerPoint. And any time we see the words compatibility mode, that means certain things will not be an option for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new Word document using the white New button on the top left of the screen in the Quick Access toolbar. Notice the new document that opens up has a name called Document 6, but more importantly, to the right of that, up here at the top, it does not say Compatibility Mode. Now, whether or not that happens on your system totally depends on the options you've set, which I will cover in a few moments. But by default on my computer, every time I create a new document, it opens up in 2010, meaning I will be able to use all of the 2010 tools. An example of a new 2010 feature would be something on the Insert tab called SmartArt. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a nice little SmartArt image. SmartArt is not something we're going to discuss in detail today. We're going to cover this in another tutorial, but a fantastic feature of Office 2010. If you haven't checked this out, I'd highly recommend doing so. For today's purposes, I'm simply going to select the image I want, and click OK. And as you can see, I get a nice SmartArt image, which is a nice 2010 edition I can take advantage of. Now, what just appeared is exactly what should happen if I am not in compatibility mode. However, let's go ahead and switch to the other file that we had opened up earlier, which was in compatibility mode. To do that, I'm going to click on my View tab up here in the ribbon, and go over here to the Switch Windows button and switch over to the other file I opened that, again, as you can see, has the words Compatibility Mode next to it. Once I'm back in this file, what I'm going to do is perform the same exact clicks I did a moment ago. I'd like to insert a SmartArt image here, so I'm going to designate a place in the document where I'd like to put it, and then click on the Insert tab up there in the ribbon. You'll recall SmartArt was towards the left-hand side, and if you think for a moment about what popped up earlier, take a look at what will pop up now. Notice how the screen that appears is something very different. This is something we actually used to see in 2003. These were the diagrams that were available way before Office 2010 even came out. So these are my only options, and this is popping up only because I'm in compatibility mode. Now, this is just one of the many examples where compatibility mode has an effect. We could literally spend 20 minutes just talking about all the different applications and all the differences you'll see whether or not you're in this mode. This being just one of many, but hopefully enough to understand why it's important to get out of this mode if you'd like to use the new 2010 tools. So what I'd like to do in this document is I would like to use the new SmartArt, but I can't because I'm in compatibility. Let's go ahead and upgrade it so that now I can use SmartArt. To upgrade your file and to get out of compatibility mode, we click on the File tab, and we can go down to where it says Convert. Now, clicking Convert will upgrade the file to 2010, and all of the new 2010 tools would then be available. I just want to suggest some caution here. Be careful using Convert, because there are times when your file may not convert properly. Uh, certain things may not work anymore when you convert. So it's really something that you want to use lightly. I like to recommend, instead of doing a convert, to do a Save As. This way, you still have the original file intact, just in case something goes wrong. And that's what I'm going to do here. Click Save As. Now, in the Save As window, if you look down there at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that it's defaulting to a 97 to 03 Word document. What I'm going to do is open that menu up and upgrade it to the very first thing in the list, which is called a Word document. It will not say 2010 on it, but will always have this X extension at the end of the file name. 
So saving it, I'm also going to uh, add a small label here that says 2010 format, so I know the difference between this and the other one, and now click Save. Now that the file is out of the compatibility mode, which I can verify by looking up there next to the file name, I should now be able to click the Insert tab and click SmartArt, and notice what appears? All of the new SmartArt graphics. In looking at the list of files here in front of us, there's another way that you can tell if you're in compatibility mode. You don't only have to rely on the words compatibility mode when you open the file. If you have your extension showing in Windows, you'll be able to see to the right of the file DOC in a lot of these, or XLS, or PPT, depending on the file that's in front of you. The ones that are 2010 formatted will have the X at the end of the file name, such as the one that I just did a few moments ago. Keep in mind again that doing the Save As option that I chose gave me a duplicate file. See, I still have the original one intact, and then I have the new one. Doing that is a good safety net because, again, converting a file may cause some problems, so I have the original just in case something goes wrong. Once I verify that everything looks good, I would simply select that file and delete it from the list so I no longer see it. And finally, if you would like to change your default behavior of the application so all of the files you create or all the new files you build will automatically default to a 2010 format, those changes would be located under the File tab. To change those defaults, you would click the File tab of the application and go down to Options here on the bottom left. Now, the option location will vary depending on which program you're doing this in. Here in Word, for example, you'll see an option called Save on the left-hand side, and then directly to the right, you'll see an option that says Save Files in this format. Mine is set to the X extension, which is the 2010 format, which means all new files I create and save will be in that format. Yours might be in the older version, so you may want to consider upgrading it to 2010, or vice versa, you may want to go backwards to a 9703 default. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, that any application you use will sometimes show the words compatibility mode. You could be in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, it doesn't matter. Keep your eye open for those words, and if you see them, just remember that certain tools will be grayed out and unavailable, and they will remain that way until we upgrade the file using some of the methods discussed today. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you again real soon.